Good morning, media colleagues, and thank you for coming again today. Thank you for your patience. As you know, it is CARICOM. Well, it is not CARICOM Africa Day. That was celebrated on the 7th, but we observe it today. Um, as you realize, our minister here is looking dapper. <laughs> it's because we are observing CARICOM Africa Day today. And uh, if you didn't know, CARICOM Africa Day is a day where we celebrate our ties, our connections with Africa, the motherland. So you will see many ministers coming out in their African attire today. That being said, our first minister, Honorable Richard Frederick, um, he is the minister in the office of the prime minister with responsibility for housing and local government. And today he has a short announcement. He will apprise us on a new development at Serenity Park. Honorable. Thank you very much. Good morning again to each and every one of you. Um, I just want to announce, well, it's good news, uh, the delivery of a campaign promise, which was reiterated in Parliament this financial year. That is the construction of an amphitheater at Serenity Park. I'm pleased to announce that construction is due to commence on Wednesday, Wednesday the 11th of this month, that's two days away. Um, the contract has been signed, everything is in order, and of obviously Serenity Park, Serenity Park will have to be closed for the duration of the construction. The, con the contractor has assured me that come Christmas this year, we should be in a position to use Serenity Park as a new uh, new premises for celebration. Uh, the amphitheater would comprise of an un uh, a covered stage, a very large facility, so that we can hold performances, uh, theatrical, arts, and otherwise. And there will also be three concessionary vending booths. Now, to take it up a notch further, um, we will invite um, we will invite franchises like Kentucky, um, Domino's, Church's Chicken, Subway, Eleanor's Ice Cream. We want we have three vending booths, like I said, and we want um, that type of 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 those franchises to maintain a presence there, so at least to uplift the entire ambience of Serenity Park. I am hoping that as long as it's done and it's done well, we shall have a reopening of the park. And of course, we shall rename Serenity Park to its original name. Because, you know, we, we Serenity Park was arrived at with a vast amount of interest by all participants in the various schools, we ask them to undergo a competitive kind of thing to come up with a name and form the committee and the name was finally selected and lo and behold, some people that belong to the political directorate figured that we needed to have inserted some more into a name that was chosen competitively and so they decided to rename it. So hopefully when the amphitheater is completed and the concessionary booths are completed, we shall do a formal renaming to its original Serenity Park. Thank you very much. Okay, the, the last I knew that the persons who were to man the parking meters were undergoing some training sessions. Um, I don't think that is totally completed yet. Um, I do think in the not too distant future, they would be operational and all our problems would be solved insofar as those parking meters are concerned. How many time frame I don't want to speak out of turn and I don't want anyone to see that the minister indicated that it would have been within such and such a time period. And so I need to um, apprise myself 
from those persons who are intimately involved in, in ensuring that uh, the operational aspect of uh, those parking meters come to fruition. So at that point, I'm devoid of knowledge in so far as time, but I know it will not be in the not in the not too distant future. We shall see them operational. So, Mr. Two questions for me. This hmm. morning, the flooding within the Caspis area, especially within the Darks area, we have on for the last at least two weeks, I've seen front of break, and they have been having a problem. And you know, a lot of people, especially the school children, you know, passing within that area, they have been a problem with flooding within the area. As your constituency, um, what's happening with the area there, especially in front to the side of Brick Island, where I live almost every day at a certain time, we'll see the flooding within this area. Well, I'm sure most of you would have known that I undertook a lot of work in Castro Central from the top, the junction of uh, Jeremy Street and Chaucey Road. Um, we did quite a bit of work. The drain underneath was blocked. It was completely blocked. We removed old mattresses, stoves, fridges, and other kind of uh, derelict uh, uh, pieces of equipment that were, that were preventing the water from flowing. We had seen relief. But right now, I understood. Um, I made a certain, I made a lot of calls and fun to ask why are we still encountering all that all that flooding and water, and I was made to understand that it is because it's directly contingent upon the sea level rising, and that is what it is all about. It is not a problem that came through because of any garbage or anything underneath there. It is because of the rising in sea level that that's causing what is causing what is happening now uh, i'm hoping and it's just natural there is nothing we can do but i'm hoping that our pumps are operational so we are trying once there is a flooding to militate against any damage we quickly pump out the water but it is not man made it's natural and again it is due to sea level rises Yes. Oh, uh, that's a very good question, and um, I should have updated you guys on that. Okay, I'm sure you realize we have a problem. Before we can think of um, the commencement of operations in that facility, the fishermen who are vending in very close proximity have to be moved. I can assure you that we have commenced the construction of a facility at um, the fisheries, and, you know, they will be moved, but what I want to do is to take the opportunity to urge each and every St. Lucian, please go up there and buy your fish. Because it is because the, the vendors believe that they have a get, greater catch in terms of the pedestrian, those pedestrians who will stop and, 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 and buy fish from them, that they congregate in an area. It can be very unsightly. It's unhealthy as well, and the Ministry of Health they have raised the red flag in so far as the vending of fish in that area is concerned. You don't have the facilities, you don't have the relevant refrigeration, you don't have any of that, and so it's, it's a health hazard. We are currently, we have commenced the construction of a facility where we will have ice, proper running water, and all the facilities necessary to give the fish vendors a proper place and a much healthier environment in which to sell their fish. That will happen very, very soon because we contemplate um, the opening of the new facility uh, where opposite Massey around October. So we are currently undergoing construction, and once we move the fishermen across there, I believe that will clear the way for the full commissioning of the facility just built. Um, the vendors that were relocated to facilitate the construction, are they all coming back? Or okay, they all, put it this way, they would have the first choice. Um, as you realize, we have upgraded the facility, and so we want to ensure that we maintain a standard. We cannot permit the vending of, you know, the kind of items that would seemingly degrade the place. We have other facilities, other outlets to that. This place is, is, is one that was done with the CCC in collaboration with Marketing Board and, and Invest St. Lucia. 
Um, a lot of thought and effort went into it. The spaces are there uh, designed for different kinds of, of, of vending of different kinds of products. So we don't want everybody to be selling bears and rum. We don't want everybody to be um, doing hair or nails. We have actually apportioned the space to various kinds of activities. And in that regard, the persons that we move would have the first priority. If the rent is too high, invariably, we might have to look for something else for them. But I can assure you, the standard that we are looking to maintain would be a much higher standard than what previously existed. The sad reality is, I'm sure all of you are aware, GPH is soon to start construction, and that space has been designed within the plans of GPH. So unfortunately, they won't be able to vent there, but the arcade, the arcade is up for refurbishment, and the arcade will be under the direct control of the company and CCC, and in that regard, we will make an arrangement for them. I am one of those who believe that we should never ever cut the income stream of any St. Lucian once that income stream is legitimately derived. And so we will do whatever we have to do to ensure we partner with them so that no one is left on the breadline. Where in Castries that doesn't flood when it rains? No, no. You see, as it relates to the flooding, I mean, one has to be dismissive of that. You cannot isolate one area of Castries. Say, let the other areas flood and that area wouldn't flood. I mean, it's, 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 it's nonsensical to even think of that. Um, what I do know is that the vendors were clamoring. The rent is not high. Relatively, the rent is not high. 300 and something dollars with VAT brings it up to $400 without a headache of carrying things on a daily basis to and from your vending location, without having the headache of when it rains that you have to run for cover. Um, things are happening now. I know it would have taken time, but obviously every time, everything takes a little time. You would have teething problems, but once those problems are out of the way, then things can run smoothly. I know they, com they were complaining about not making money, but that has to be balanced with the aesthetic appeal that we present our city with. We must not forget that tourism is the mainstay of our economy at this point. It is, it's no longer agriculture. And we cannot present a product where you have fishermen selling fish vai vai. The place stinks. Then we have coconut vendors on the other side doing what they want. Then we have by the print tree vendors selling as though it's a ghetto. We need to regularize that but to try our best not to compromise, like I said previously, the income stream of those people because they too have dependence and sometimes they have to think outside the box. We as a government, we have a responsibility. We have to ensure that we create an enabling environment. And if it entails us doing, thinking outside the box and building something somewhere else, but doing it in an orderly fashion so that it does not compromise the aesthetic appeal of our city. I'm sure most of you know, when you were walking opposite Valmonde on Labry Street, coming from by the court, is either you settle to walk in the, on the road or be prepared to hit your foot on one of those pieces of steel. You know, and that is, that is what was happening around the place. Today we have nice flower pots, we have, oh yeah, and let me just take the opportunity to warn those persons. I mean, they are van, persons just believe in vandalism. Persons believe that they can go about demolishing everything that looks good. I mean, we have spent a lot of money buying plants, flowers, just to ensure that the place looks good. And some people, for reasons unknown to me, would uproot some of the plants and go with them, or they would break them. They would just engage in behavior that is antisocial as far as I'm concerned. And so I want to ask those persons to at least consider what you're doing to your country. Consider the negative impact of what you're doing. You don't live alone. And I want to say that to the vendors, the fishermen, the, the coconut vendors. 
All of us have to survive. But we cannot keep our city in a state that looks so nasty that not even a, 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 any visitor wants to pass there. You know, the kind of, of, of stenches, the, the disorder. I mean, you pass by the market, all those old, you pass there on an evening. What they call them, kabuis? <laughs> you know, selling the fish, a line in a manner that does not lend to, to, to be sightly at all. So all of those things we take into account. We don't want to send anybody begging. We don't want to send anybody away from the breadline. But at least let us do things in a cordial manner and understand that this is our country. And when we keep it clean and tourism, tourism does better, it is for the betterment of each, of, of each and every one of us. I can guarantee you before year end, this local government legislation will be tabled in parliament. So we will soon hear, um, once it's gazetted and given an implementation date, we will hear about the election of local government officers and not the selection. You ready? So our final speaker is the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Kenson Kazime. And he will address you on a few developments, of course, alongside his peers, Ms. Eurelis Dillaire. Um, the first, Julian Alfred's return and plans for the national celebration, the semi-pro football league, CPL St. Lucia's performance and overall attendance, um, Minister, are you ready? He will address you and, uh, of course, questions can follow. Morning, everybody. Of course, um, you will be aware that uh, Cabinet took the decision to put a planning committee together um, for the return of Julian Alfred. Um, that committee has been meeting quite frequently to ensure that we have a grand event when she returns. And of course, uh, part of that committee is my permanent secretary, Dr. Eurelis Hiller. She's been working as Dile, sorry. Dr. Hiller is somewhere in my mind too. Um, he's been working with us as well. Uh, Dr. Dile has been, um, of course, chairing most of the meetings with the different subcommittees that are responsible for ensuring that we have a very smooth event. And so I've, I've brought her here today for any questions you all may have in terms of um, how we will be executing Julian's return. I can say to you, it is a huge undertaking. There are many different things that we have planned uh, for her return. We see the different comments on our social media platforms with regards to what should be done, uh, what shouldn't be done, what other islands and countries have done and we've taken most of that into consideration to come up with what we believe St. Lucia should be doing. So we'll definitely be welcoming questions about that. As you know, St. Lucia hosted its first CPL match for 2024. I am indeed proud of St. Lucians. Um, we have uh, most of the shirts sold out, Darren Sami. Um, most persons were able to purchase the paraphernalia and uh, I think another shipment came in today, and so persons can continue to get their, their replica St. Lucia King shoots, um, but it really was a sea of blue um, on, on Saturday night. Unfortunately, our team had a bad day, and I will say that again. As somebody who's been in sports, there are days, no matter how well you prepare, no matter if you are the best in the world, you would have off days in the sport, and I will categorize the performance as an off day. And uh, so today, I really want to say to St. Lucians that they should uh, come out in support on Tuesday night, on Thursday night, and on Sunday night as the Kings continue to uh, impress and to continue to do better as we certainly hoping to bring the title home uh, in coming in this year's version. I will say that um, we were very happy with uh, the, the numbers at the Darren Sammy Johnson Charles stand was sold out. Um, 
we certainly hoping that the castries and the grocery stands will be sold out along with the grounds. Um, you could see a lot of work has gone into the Darren Sammy um, cricket ground and we continue to uh, develop the area uh, that is being used for cricket and sport development. We also are continuing to forge ahead as it pertains to our semi-professional football league. We are now at the business end of the league. We are certainly hoping that after the arrival of Julian Alfred, that we will go into the playoff round uh, of the football competition, the inaugural football competition. And thereafter, we will see some more football with the St. Lucia Football Association and Black Hat Football. So there's a lot going on in sport in St. Lucia. We also have, the, in October, the launch of another, which will be our third um, alternative sports season. And there uh, really is a lot going on, and we're expecting even more developments uh, in the sporting arena. Uh, we continue to work on our sport policy. I was given a deadline by my permanent secretary for having it on my desk. I'm happy she's here today, and she may be able to give us a better idea of when this will be presented to cabinet and to the various stakeholders. I think that part has already been initiated for onward transmission to parliament, adoption, and for St. Lucia on a whole. Questions? Need my PS? Yes, PS, come. U R A L I S E. It's my first name and my surname D E L A I R E. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Well, Julian Alfred will be coming to St. Lucia on the 24th of September, that's Tuesday the 24th, via Euronora International Airport. And we have plans for Julian from the time she lands in St. Lucia until she leaves on the 29th. When she arrives, we have a small opening ceremony at the airport. And of course, we have some fanfare and so on for her arrival. She'll be met by cabinet members and other members, Olympic Committee, you know, the sporting fraternity. Thereafter, we, she leaves Euronera International Airport to um, Grosile. So all of St. Lucia, at least on the East Coast, will get to have a view, you know, even if it's just to see her um, on the way to Grosile. On the 25th, we have schools rallies in the West and the East Coast. So we have students from all over St. Lucia. We'll get a chance to see her and showcase our talent also at these two school rallies at the Sufre Midi Stadium and at the Larry Shoes Playing Field. On the 26th, she will be going to the Cicero Primary School where Mural be unveiled and other announcements will be made at the Cicero Primary School you know that this is the primary school that Julian attended. And so they will, they have taken it up on their own to do some activities there together with the parliamentary rep. Um, on that day, First National also has some activities for Julian and I'm, I think they should be the ones to announce the activities. There are two activities, one of it is private. On the last day, which is the 27th, we have the national concert, a free concert and I'm sure a while ago the Prime Minister made the announcement that the 27th is the holiday. So we're hoping that St. Lucians will come out and support. We're expecting to have as huge a crowd as we had for the CPL. So I'm already encouraging all St. Lucians to bring along the children, bring the entire family, and let's make it a national event on the 27th, where the best of St. Lucia will be on show. So we're having a concert at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground from 4 p.m. Gates open from 4 p.m. It's a free concert, so I'm encouraging and I'm inviting everyone to the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. The capacity is 12,500, and that's just sitting, and we also have the field that we can accommodate persons. So feel free and come out and support us, support Julian, support everybody. I've been, while I was sitting there, I've gotten about five calls from international media of persons who want to come to St. Lucia and asking what is happening in the calendar and so on. But we wanted the PM to make his announcement first in terms of the holiday. And so the calendar will be out today 
and the media will be bombarded with all kinds of ad advertisements and sensitizing St. Lucians as to what is happening. So I just invite all St. Lucians to come out and support the activities. Let's show, you know, our solidarity, our love for the sport for Julian and for St. Lucia. Yeah, all of that will be out. Yes. Yeah, the whole route will have billboards and posters. Yes, we will have all of these things out there. Starting this week or from tomorrow. Well, the business community I noticed have been putting out a lot of shoots. You do not want to take that away from them. And so it's a time for all St. Lucians to make a little, you know, fry economically. So I don't think we should compete with, you know, the other businesses out there who are selling shoots. But if we do make shoots, it will be just for the organizing committee. But we won't have shoots on sale for the public. And you know, I know something that would be very special, especially to the kids, you know, it's putting for Yes, Julian will be speaking at every event she'll be attending. So the students will hear from her, um, the reception at Government House, I mean announcements, she will be speaking there too. Um, she will be speaking at the concert, everybody gets a chance to see her, though maybe not very close, but she will speak there. We have quite a few official speeches that will be taking place on the 27th, including a speech from the Prime Minister, because I'm sure everybody wants to hear the pronouncements as to what we are doing as a St. Lucian um, community. So that will be said and by the Prime Minister on and the, the 27th. And the concert will be all local and different genres of... Different genres, yes. Showcasing the best of St. Lucia, all of St. Lucia's culture. Everything. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> my first idea is good for me. Um, we know the speech, and I mean, uh, yes, about, let's say, days after she, she won, she won, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was, I know you the PM, but uh, he said you were within the organizing committee. Within her constituency, some people are saying that the Millennium Highway should be named after also. <laughs> The roundabout date have been a lot of people are suggesting. So I don't know if the minister is there, Mr. Minister. I don't know one of you would care to. <laughs> but ask. before the minister comes, I did say that all of those pronouncements okay. would be made by Mr. the PM, minister. but minister would have more information on that yeah. than I do. So maybe Even he people might. People from her constituency <laughs> have been sure. crying out saying that the Millennium Highway, and some people suggested that the statue should be facing her home. Yes. Within the, the, the roundabout, it opens the millennium to her constituency, so any... Yeah, so this is why we had a committee set up. The Cabinet of Ministers decided that we really wanted to make this as inclusive as possible, to welcome as many ideas as possible. Uh, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, even on their social media page, invited individuals to send in all of their ideas as to how it is we can actually show appreciation to Julian Alfred. I think what we have with uh, this, this media house is a, a desire to get an announcement from either my PS and myself as to exactly what the pronouncements will be made in terms of what we are actually going to do for Julian Alfred, but I can let one cat out of the bag, and that cat is, it's going to be big. <laughs> it's going to be big. The Prime Minister has, of course, sat down. We made the presentation to the organizing committee, made the presentation um, to the cabinet of ministers for them to opine and uh, of course with everything the final decision and the announcements will be made uh, by the honorable prime minister at that concert um, at that national event i will say um, and so we invite everybody to be there in person to hear exactly what saint lucia will be gifting julian alfred as a result 
of this uh, momentous occasion and what she's actually achieved for us. Um, in addition to that, we also have, we also plan to bring in the other Olympians who were part of this historic moment uh, to be part of the festivities. We will be also making somewhat of an announcement on, on what they will be receiving from the government of St. Lucia for their participation at the last Olympics. So we have not left them out. Um, and so we're really hoping that by now, uh, since we sold over uh, 5,000 shirts for CPL, uh, most persons would have a replica St. Lucia shirt. And I'm certainly hoping that the business community has already put out the different designs so that all of us will be decked in blue and uh, black and white and yellow on that occasion to really enjoy um, the camaraderie at the Darren Sami National Cricket Grounds on the 27th. We know this is the national holiday, and we know persons will go to the beach, some people will go online, but the reason for having this holiday is for us to celebrate Julian Alfred. So that being said, we're expecting everybody to turn up on the 27th at the Darren Sammy to really show the appreciation and love we have for what she's done for all of us that is going to impact the rest of uh, the generations to come. Just one quick, uh, just a quick, a quick show, yes. mm -hmm. um, If we need if we need to have a discussion about what Julian has received since this accomplishment from the different commercial sectors, um, we will be here for a while talking about some of the gifts I've received. Uh, many, many calls from the business sector, um, even from, a, like, for instance, a Jade Mountain in terms of what they are going to give to Julian Alfred. And uh, some of the salt gas station has also reached out. And we continue to ask the corporate sector to really pour out their, their blessings on her for her achievement. Um, so we continue to encourage the business sector to do their part. And this is, a, this is the occasion where they should really come out. And so if she was gifted something overseas that, is, that belongs to her, or the gift that she's going to receive from the government of St. Lucia, it will also belong to her on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. And uh, I'm just exceedingly proud of the outpouring of ideas. I just want to let individuals know we could not do every single thing they recommended. There is no perfect award for Julian Alfred. The sky's the limit in terms of what should be done for Julian Alfred. And we expect that some will say, oh, you should have done this and you should have done that. But we really took a long time discussing exactly what we're going to narrow it down to. And uh, the Prime Minister will be making that official announcement on the 27th of September, uh, 2024, at the Darren Army Cricket Grounds. I am looking forward to a lot of the performances, like Kelly B from the community of Grand Riviere, who made a very nice song for Julian Alfred, and the video is out on Facebook. You can check it out. He's from my constituency. Big up, Kelly B. And the other individuals, including Sly, of course, Ezra the Fun Machine, some of the biggest um, power soca Denry segment um, artists in St. Lucia will be in concert, and I'm really looking forward to having a carnival like activity as somebody who loves carnival this will be the second one in one year for me so i'm really looking forward to it um, not just for myself but of course my twin girls the rest of the family to really go in as a posse to enjoy the 27th of a september event yeah thank you by investment program among other things I ask that you obey the house rules. Remember, this is the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Let's watch how we address him. And let us all take turns to answer questions. All right, Prime Minister. Thank you. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press. I will be making a few statements to you this morning, but I want to inform you that this morning I received from the Acting Commission of Police the Police Force Crime Prevention Strategy for the period September to March 2025. I received it this morning from the Commissioner of Police. I have just received it, and I will be going through it and have a discussion with the
commissioner of police and the high command on the strategy. But he has, he has given me, as promised, a strategy which he intends to pursue over, over the next six months as commissioner of police. But having said so, as we as we deal with the, with that strategy, I want to um, say to all those concerned that we should watch the rhetoric as it comes to crime. Um, we seem to be developing a society where some of the words spoken seem to be creating a level of animosity, a level of, of, of distrust, a level of anger that doesn't augur well for our society. I think crime is something that the entire society should be involved in. There is no need for us to create an increased level of animosity or hatred for our own personal reasons. We should, criminals have no conscience. Criminals do not choose people to victimize. We have to have a united effort. We have to try by our words not to appear to be looking for any excuses for criminality. And I, and I just think, why is we embark on that era? On an era that is not good for our country, the era where there is an increase in gun violence. Even though there has been a 20% reduction in summary offenses, there is an increase in gun violence, and we need to have an approach towards it. Gun violence in St. Lucia has been there for a while. Is escalating now. But there sh we should never seem, by our utterances, to be given any excuse for wanton criminality. There is absolutely no excuse for it. The government is only two weeks ago, we funded the SEEDS project, where a group of people are getting involved in social interventions to help improve the environment so that the allure of crime could decrease. The government funded that. For the SSDF, SSDF, we have the ACT project, where the government again is funding crime intervention strategies. We have the Professional Football League, where we're using sports as a means of seeing if we can combat this wanton violence in the country. But each one of us must play our part. Each one of us must play our part. And I want to urge that the rhetoric diminish, the rhetoric of hatred, the rhetoric of, of revenge, the rhetoric of going after people, the rhetoric of personal attacks that doesn't augur well for our society. It may appear to have short-term success, but in the final analysis, our country will remain. Politicians will come and politicians will go, but our country will remain. I also want to urge some personal responsibility. There's a carnage on the streets of, of the country, most of it because of reckless driving. Most of it. We need, to, we need to have some personal responsibility. Government cannot be blamed for someone who decides to drive at 70 miles per hour on a street made for driving at 30 miles per hour. So we have to urge personal responsibility. We need that. We need our drivers, our motorcyclists, to observe simple Simple, simple measures, like wearing a, a crash helmet, not overtaking unnecessarily. So in this carnage on, on, on the streets that's happening, these, these accidents and these deaths, they can be avoided simply by we exercising some more responsibility, personal re responsibility. So this, this situation I'm urging, that we understand it's a national problem and all of us, every one of us, 
should get together. And when I say get together, it doesn't mean physically get together in a room or get together under a particular political environment. Getting together in our utterances, in the things we see, so that we could help combat this, this problem. So I will become, I will, the Commissioner of Police, as I said, he's given the, the strategy and he will get back to you at some point. But I'm looking through it and I, I also will get back to you at some point. Today also is CARICOM African Day. And then I, I, I just want to reiterate that we must not forget the African connection to St. Lucia. It lives in the rhythms of our music, the flavors of our cuisine, and in the very faces of our people. It thrives in the contributions of African professionals who have enriched our island in medicine, spirituality, and industry. We have many African priests, particularly in the Catholic Church in, in St. Lucia. I stand before you today, not just as your Prime Minister, but as a citizen, caring, sharing, and invested in our nation's future. I see a Senusha that is not defined by size, but by the magnitude of our ambitions and the strength of our partnerships. As we commemorate this African, this Caricom Africa Day, I invite each of you to engage with our shared heritage. Together, we celebrate not just a diplomatic milestone, but a homecoming of the heart. I call upon every citizen to join in a national display of unity and cultural pride today, Monday, 9th September. In fact, our, our, our cabinet, members of our cabinet, have joined in wearing some form of African dress uh, today. On this day, let the vibrant colors and patterns of, Africa, of the African attire adorn our streets, our workplaces, and our schools. A powerful statement of who we are and where we come from. By embracing our African roots, we do not diminish our Caribbean identity. We enhance it. We declare to the world that St. Lucia is a nation that honors its past while boldly stepping into the future. This gesture symbolizing our readiness to engage with Africa, not just economically or politically, but as a kin reuniting after a long separation. The Regional Integration Unit in the Office of the Prime Minister has prepared a roundtable discussion entitled CARICOM Africa Musings. Music, the sound of resistance. It will be streamed by the government of St. Lucia across platforms. I urge you to watch, listen, and add your own voice to the conversation. My fellow St. Lucians, as we celebrate the CARICOM Africa Day, let us look to tomorrow. Let us embrace this rekindled relationship with Africa, not as a return to the past, but as a bold step in the future. Today, we will write the next chapter of St. Lucia's history, a tale of a small island with a global vision, forever proud of its African heritage and Caribbean spirits. Let us take charge and tell the story of our people, a story of growth, of sharing, and of caring that spans continents and generations. I also would like to remind you that today is the anniversary of the fire at St. Jude Hospital, the old St. Jude Hospital, and on Friday, we are, we are going to be signing the loan agreement for the reconstruction of that hospital. We've started work on it. We've got, as I told you, that have been working on, on four buildings. Work on these four buildings is progressing smoothly. And on Saturday, on Friday the 14th, we'll be signing, uh, signing the loan agreement with the Saudi Fund, the, technical, the Saudi Technical Development Fund. I also would like to pay tribute to a former journalist, Dave Samuels. And um, Dave Samuels was a journalist of long standing. And on behalf of the Cabinet of Ministers and the Government of People of St. Lucia, 
I want to extend condolences to the families and loved ones of Mr. David Samuel SLMM, who recently passed away. Mr. Samuel devoted 56 years of his life in broadcasting and various fields, tourism, entertainment, and civic duty. Many will remember the early days of his career when he adopted the name of Dave the Rave, mentored by Winston Hingson, who is still around, into becoming a sensational radio personality, while at the same time making a name for himself as the lead singer of the True Tones in his formative, in his formative years, led by Winston's brother, Ronald Boo Hingson. In his role as entertainment manager at the then Latok Hotel, Mr. Samuels created opportunities for growing numbers of local entertainers to perform regularly at the hotel and leading to Mr. Samuel taking the bold step of recording his own music, providing additional avenues to expose the talents of regional and international audiences. It was in the field of broadcasting that Mr. Samuels will be most remembered for his distinct voice and later his unique interviewing style. On Radio St. Lucia, he hosted Morning Coffee Break and Mr. Chairman on Calabash TV. Mr. Samuel had a hand in shaping the entry and encouraging the progression of several younger media professionals in the business when he established David Samuel Production, a public relations company, the first in St. Lucia, as well as a television broadcasting company. Some of these people have gone on to start their own business. I'm proud that the government of St. Lucia endorses the media honor society that Mr. Samuel was a trailblazer for his time and supported the award last year to Mr. Samuel for his long and outstanding legacy to broadcasting, the media, and other related areas in St. Lucia. Rest well, and may his soul rest in peace. I now want to also give you a read a statement on the Citizenship by Investment Program. As you may recall, on June 3, 2024, St. Lucia signed the Memorandum of Agreement, the MOE, for Citizenship by Investment Programs, CBI, we call it in St. Lucia, CIP. That was an important step in aligning the pricing, regulations, and vetting practices across the five Caribbean CBI nations. Since signing the MOE, St. Lucia has fully engaged in all actions. We are firming our commitment to the highest standards in our CIP program. On August 24th, on August 29th, 2024, the five Eastern Caribbean countries offering CBI programs, Antigua and Barbuda, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts Nevis, and St. Lucia, held a round table in Grenada with the United States Department of the Treasury to review the implementation of the six CIP principles agreed to in February 2023. The meeting was co-chaired by Governor Timothy N.J. Antoine of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary Warren Rahn of the U.S. Treasury. Attendees included delegations from the CBI programs comprising chairs, CEOs, technical staff, and representatives from the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Commission held led by Director General Dr. Didicus Jules. It was noted that all CIP countries have implemented the four principles. One, collective agreement on treatment of denials. No CIP country will, pro will process applications from individuals denied by any of the other five jurisdictions. It should be noted that St. Lucia has always featured this measure within its due diligence process. Two, interviews. Applicants will, in, will undergo interviews as part of the due diligence process. St. Lucia was the first to begin interviews on September 4, 2023. Three, 
additional checks. Each applicant will be subject to additional background checks with the Financial Intelligence Unit of the relevant country. St. Lucia commenced these checks on September 4th, 2023. Four, treatment of Russians and suspension on the processing, on the processing of applications from Russian nationals commenced on February 15th, 2023. The CBI, CIP countries are making progress in on the final two principles, audits and the retrieval of revoked passports. The Citizenship by Investment Board has engaged and agreed to the scope of works with an internationally renowned consulting firm, Deloitte, and will soon commence its operational audits. The U.S. authorities have welcomed our steps to establishing an independent regional regulator with an interim regulatory commission that includes representation from each participating island that is to be announced soon. Prior to the MOA, St. Lucia had already implemented or agreed to enact the following deliverables, reflecting our proactive commitment to upholding the highest standards, including 1 information sharing and transparency standards, two, security screening and framework, three, joint training and capacity building. It also should be noted that St. Lucia is the only CIP territory that has granted its bank complete access to its application portal, an initiative that has been highly commended by all involved. Finally, I'm pleased to inform you that the annual report on St. Lucia Citizenship by Investment Program for the period April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023 has been completed. This report will be presented to the Cabinet and tabled in Parliament upon the return of Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier, the Minister with Responsibility for the CIP Program. I thank you. No, he was, I didn't see that. He was tasked with putting together all the players involved in crime prevention. I was clear. I said all the players, I made it clear that he was not the Minister of National Security. I said he was tasked with putting together all the people who were involved in doing things for crime prevention, putting them together so they could come with some proposal. I never said that he was the Minister of National Security who would have a planned strategy. I never said so. I said prevention, different. You started out that his um, swearing in and also he said okay. that he would come up with a plan. Yes, he was supposed to meet with different stakeholders with, to come up with a plan. That was what, that's the words. He also repeated those words. Um, where are we with that? We have a new commissioner of police, and he's presented a six-month crime prevention strategy. He is a new commissioner of police, and as we've always made it clear, that in terms of operational matters, the police are involved. So we have to look onto the strategy that the new commissioner of police has put into place. So this is the plan we're going with the new commissioner of police. Because the police are always the ones in charge of operational matters. We, we, in, anything, any, anything that we have, Zane, we'll work together, together with the, with the new commissioner, to see if together, holistically, we can come, we can solve that, that problem, help solve that problem, which is really difficult, I can tell you. It's a very difficult, difficult situation. And I admit, there are no short-term answers. I can't come here and give you any 
hands and tell you this will stop today or tomorrow. I can tell you it's a very difficult, all hands must be on deck for us to deal with, with, with this problem. We cannot tell you that we have an exact solution. No one, no one, no one has come up with an exact solution. It's not a precise science. It's something the whole world is working on. You, you heard about the crime escalation in Toronto, Canada, where our solution was, was just murdered, a 15-year-old. We heard about the, 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 the crime problems in London, England, where there are riots and gangs. In fact, only this morning I read about the increase in gangs, the gang situation in, the, in, in England. We heard about situation in the CARICOM countries. So it, it, it's not an easy situation. We can't come here and I can come and, and tell you that I have all these solutions. We're trying all, we are trying. And we, that's all we can do. We can try. Because it's not a science. It's not a something that you can see, you can find the exact answers. No one, if anyone, can come up with an exact answer to the gun violence in this country, we will take it, absorb it fully. We're not in this business to try to, 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 to gain points on each other. We're in this business to try to make our country safer for all of us. It's, it's not, not safer for one part of the society. Safer for all of us. There is nothing to be gained by the wanton gun violence in this country. None be gained either politically, socially, or economically. So I want to urge you. I want to urge everyone, let us try our best to lower the rhetoric and the blame game. It's reached a point where all of us, all of us, because no one has come up with a solution. It's, it's a very difficult, you know, this crime situation is creating problems in our health, in our health services when there's a, a, a shooting or a wounding our emergency services suffer it, it, it it's been calculated that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to deal with any gun related wound so it it, it is pervasive it, it, it's at different levels of the society the the time for the blame game the time for playing political games is over. There's no time for that. No one will benefit. No one will benefit. That's why I'm, I'm calling on a lowering of the rhetoric, a lowering of the blame game, a lowering of the sarcasm, a lowering of the, of the, of the, let's low, let's lower the tempo and let's aim our resources at the people, the criminals who are perpetuating the crime. It's, it's a serious situation, very serious, that we have to deal with. We go to Barbados later this year, heads of government, to have continue a symposium on crime prevention all over the region. I don't want to call countries. All over the region, there seems to be that scourge of gun violence all over the region. So I just want to plead to everyone. Let's lower the rhetoric. Let's stop the, the, the attacks and the, and, the, and the strong language. Let's lower it for the benefit of our country. Yeah, um, Sir Prime Minister, um, on the CIP issue, um, you mentioned that five islands, five five countries together signed the MOU after the meeting of the US Treasury. Would you say that um, this MOU kind of solidifies the CIA, even though we've had all the controversies on it? You see, I've always been point about controversies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I've been, I've made a point all the time. The controversy is one man. The controversy is one man, one person. There is no controversy with the CNHS CIP program as it relates to 
its due diligence as relates to its practices. It's one man, one individual who has control over sea and now aided and abetted by the opposition. Have you heard any statement by the Europeans about this? I mean, you have any statement by, by, by the US? You have any statement by the ECCB? No. So this is just consolidating the CIP because of the importance of the CIP to the economic development of our country. The controversy in St. Lucia is with one man. One man. There is no, there is no, what's happening is a civil matter. A civil matter brought, which is, civil matters happen every day in the U.S. It's a civil matter. No one, and this is why we have just told you that St. Lucia is the only country where the bank has access to the CIP's portal. It's one man. And this is what I, I've been trying, I'm at pains to tell you. It's, it's, it's not a worldwide problem. That, that is manifesting itself in St. Lucia. It's not a problem where people are up in arms. That meeting was chaired by the U.S. Treasury. It's co-chaired by the U.S. Treasury. So I just want to tell you that the controversy is one man and, an, and another blogger. And this is what you, I, I mean, I've been trying to say all the time. It strengthens it. It strengthens our programs. I mean, it's strength because of the economic benefit of these programs. There are countries in the region that more than 50% of their revenue comes from CIP programs. St. Lucia is fortunate. Less than 5% of our revenue comes from the CIP program. Less than 5%. You understand? But other countries, more than 50% comes from CIP programs. So we're fortunate. Our economy is not fully dependent on the CIP program. It helps us. So I just want to make that point. And this is why I've been, I've been at Northam to try to say to the people of St. Lucia, the problem is one man who has a problem. No, no, it's, oh, well, it's, 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 it's not a public, and, and, and by the way, talking about, I want, to, I want to announce to you that Friday, the 27th of, of September, will be a public holiday known as Julian Alfred Day. Friday, the 27th of September. Julian Alfred will be arriving on the 24th of, of September, and a whole program of activities will be announced by the chairman of the arrival the arrival committee. Yeah. yeah. So um, this this occasion today, you say. Friday is the twenty seventh, twenty sixth. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Of today's observation, maybe I'm the one. Who yes, I, is I've I've carried carried my African on the event. Yes. Yeah. And we, we are also celebrating a new region with Africa. You know, African Export Import Bank um, made available to us six million dollars to help in the repair of schools. And this is that this has started. This is that it will continue as we speak. Just to be clear, Africa, our Africa Caricom Day is on the seventh of September. This is the third year it's been uh, um, celebrated, and we're doing the African attire on the Monday, the night, today, because it's a weekend. You know, that's the that's when we want the public and uh, private sector to sort of participate. So seventh is the official day. I 
we would welcome any strategy, any suggestion. I've said so so many times before. Any suggestion from anyone who would, that would help us in the reduction of crime in this country, including what you just said. Uh -huh. will be, you said a national holiday on the 27th. Will it be annual or just that day? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. That's a yes, very good question. I, want I, want I applaud you for giving me a trick question. <laughs> I will discuss it with the cabinet. I applaud that question. I, right now, I have to discuss with the cabinet. But that's a very good question. Very good question. That's a very good question. Almost a trick question. <laughs> okay, so my final question to you. Um, let's go back to what you said earlier. You mentioned um, revenge, and you mentioned social programs. Social programs seem to be a problem with us in our crime. We cannot get a proper social program. We have a lot of single parents with kids. I know for sure you have put a lot of things in place, but can it reach every morning? We seem to have a social pro uh, problem with our social programs, and also the revenge killings seems to be people not satisfied with our courts, not satisfied with the police, and starts causing a problem for basically solution. How you put it? And, we, and basically we are free with that. Um, with the revenge killings, as you said, we do not know sometimes when they come to police are fulfilled. What do we do, the social programs? How do we intend to fight that? Because that's where it comes from. A lot of the crime, sometimes we see it happening in the ghettos. What do we do to target it? Because in no sense, they're saying that child will do this, but if you hit it from earlier from, then there is sure, sure. Of it. I mean, you must have known, you must have heard last last week or two weeks ago, we upgraded the quality of education from our preschools. Our our preschools, we assisted non-governmental preschools, non-governmental preschools, and helped them to upgrade their, 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 their standards, upgrade their teaching methods. We're going to be helping the helping tuition. So we could, we, the government is going to be making a contribution towards the tuition for each child who goes to the preschool. That, 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 that must start from the preschool. It must start from early. You, you, you understand? I mean, it's not, it's, it's not a matter of making excuses, right? It's not a matter of making excuses. It's a matter of fact. This is a pervasive problem that has seemed to be at a peak now all over the world. You heard in Georgia, the last killing in, in, in Georgia, wanted killing. So much so, the United States government have, have begun to charge the parents. So it's not, I and mean, we can, for political reasons, we can make glib statements and, 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 and say a lot of things that sound good. But the reality is, we have a problem. We have a problem. And if this is this prime minister is not there any longer, the problem will remain. This government has spent more in social programs than any other government in the history of St. Lucia. We pay facility fees for every child. Every child we pay facility fees for. Never before in the history of St. Lucia to ensure that parents, single or otherwise, can send their children to school. We give $2.5 million worth of educational support to parents. We are paying CXC English and Maths for students. Today, teachers will get $1,400 each to help them in the supply of materials for, for school children. So the, it's, a, it's a very, very complex problem. And I, I, don't, I don't come to you and tell you, I have the problem. I have the, I have the solution. Right now, there is full-time research at the University of the West Indies, why is there this wanton violence of young men against each other? But as I say, all of us must be our part by what we say, by the rhetoric. We, we must be able to be our legal part because sometimes we say that when our leaders make statements of procl proclamation of war and revenge and going for each other, when we make these statements, we, you never know how it goes into the, 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 the brain, into the minds of people who have the propensity to commit crime. This is why I'm calling for a, a lowering of the, of, the, of, the, of the tension, a lowering of the rhetoric for the benefit of the country. 
Thank you very much.